If you think you've seen everything with the experimental YF-23, you're wrong. There was one other design. It was to be the Navy's fifth gen multi-role aircraft. Stealthy, maneuverable, and ready to hit that highway to the danger zone. But it would face political opposition, technical challenges, and even Lockheed trying to steal the future jet crown for the second time. Join me today on the story of the aircraft that Maverick should have flown in the latest Top Gun and why we never got it. This is the incredible NATF 23. Without spoiling the Top Gun Maverick for anybody who hasn't seen the movie yet, Maverick and his band of elite Navy pilots fly the Super Hornets in the latest Top Gun sequel. Seriously, just go watch it. It has the official found and explained stamp of approval. And for those who watched it and might be asking yourself how it could have been better, well, today I have the answer. Our story begins with the Air Force's Advanced Tactical Fighter Program, or ATF, that was launched during the late 80s to create America's first fifth-gen aircraft, with the YF-22 and YF-23 being the main competitors. The YF-22 would end up taking the edge and becoming what we know today is the F-22 Raptor. I have a full video on the YF-23 and this contest right here on the channel, which you can watch right now. But there was a footnote to this story. Northrop wasn't going to accept the loss and went over to the Navy with a proposal that could have changed everything. While this jet would have been a game changer for Maverick and Top Gun, he still would have not been successful without his wingman. And that's a lesson I think I have learned the most that I need wingmen just like you, especially with today's video sponsor. War Thunder. I'm asking you to come and play with me and be the goose to my maverick. War Thunder is a free military vehicle combat online game featuring over 2,000 different land, sea and air machines that you can fly, drive and cruise to challenge yourself to be better than the aces of the past. Their range lasts from 1920s to the Cold War with tanks, boats, ships and of course so many aircraft. Legit, they have everything from biplanes to fighter jets and even helicopters that you can unlock, my favourite so far being the P400. And there are many updates every few months with more content, just like one that featured the F-14 Tomcat. You can play solo missions, or my favourite, in huge air battles with over a hundred different maps. That's right, huge battles that we can all play together. I'm still very much a beginner in the game, so you have a great chance to save me from other players, or if you really want, shoot me down. Plus, when you make an account with my link, you'll get a free bonus premium tank, aircraft, boat or ship, as well as a boost to your own account. The game's free to play across all platforms from PlayStation to Xbox and PC and you can cross play with anybody on any other device, so you don't need anything, just a keyboard and a mouse on the basic PC will run it. So no excuse not to make an account below with my link, do the tutorial and come and play with me this weekend. I'll put some more details down below. It's going to be an absolute blast. Back to the show. The Navy was looking for a fifth generation aircraft for themselves to replace the aging F-14 Tomcats and a jet that could be the spearhead for the future of the Navy Air Force. But requirements for the naval aircraft are far different than a regular Air Force jet, so the YF-23 in its original form wasn't going to fit the bill. Instead, several very significant modifications were to be done to the fuselage, almost creating a completely new aircraft, barely resembling its predecessor. But Northrop wouldn't be the only company pitching to the Navy. Of course, by 1990, when the Navy officially launched the NATF program, Lockheed had heard about it and was also in on the race. No! 
They presented their own version of the F-22 Raptor for the Navy, which would be the main competition for the NATF-23. And thus, the showdown of the future Navy jet was on. For Northrop to be Lockheed at their own game, the engineers needed to not only reach the technical requirements of the Navy's future aircraft, but to utterly smash them in such a way that nobody would think twice. Exactly what the Lockheed F-22 Raptor had done to steal the contract away from Northrop only a few years earlier. This new aircraft, unlike the original YF-23, followed a different design philosophy, and although horizontal stabilization were missing as with the original, large canards were added to the front of the fuselage to help control and maneuver the aircraft. We can say with fair certainty that there was more versions of this design, but more on that in a minute. Wings were now larger because naval aircraft require larger wing and flap areas for operating from an aircraft carrier, and were foldable to operate on aircraft carriers. Vertical stabilizers were not as angled as with the original, but still still had no rudders, and instead moved as one hole with a very similar sawtooth design choice on the back, probably to lower the RCS or rear cross section from certain angles. Although still sporting S ducts, engines were now positioned much lower than on the YF-23 and had a centered position compared to the forward fuselage. Note here one very interesting detail. Often it said how influence Russia's Su-57 is by the F-22 design, but instead we should look elsewhere and it's actually the YF-23 and its naval variant which the Ruskies borrowed some solutions from. The shape of the hump behind the canopy is quite similar to the NATF-23 design, and if we have a look at the side profile, the forward fuselage design is obviously heavily inspired by the YF-23. What a coincidence. The NATF-23 had the same weapons bay positioned as the YF-23 with additional hardpoints on the wings for either additional fuel or weapons capability. And you in the audience who commented on the YF-23 video might know where this is going. With confidence that they had made the superior jet, Northrop presented it to the Navy. It would end up taking a very long time for the Navy to get their 5th gen jets, namely the F-35C variant. This is over 20 plus years later and still the Super Hornet remains the backbone of the Navy, with their future service prolonged beyond 2030 for the current aircraft with new Block 3 aircraft ordered only last year. So clearly in retrospect, the NATF-23 was perfect and desperately needed by the Navy. What happened? When looking at the designs, the Navy pointed out some flaws. One of the issues with the NATF-23 were the canards, because normally they increase the cross-section and we don't want that with a stealth aircraft. Northrop would actually make another version to fix this flaw, which actually went through tunnel testing. The model that you can see displayed in St. Louis and was donated by none other than Boeing in the early 2000s. And clearly this design didn't have any canards. Another problem was the weapons bay, which was very limited in capacity and had a complicated design as the original, while aircraft like the FA-18E and F are well known to have large payload capability for their role as both fighter and attack aircraft. In some cases, a single missile jam could result in the entire NAFT-23 being unable to deploy its payload, a flaw that shockingly the engineers didn't try to fix from the original YF-23 proposal. So the role of the NATF-23 would be inclined to be a specialized fighter rather than a multi-role jet that the Navy needed. And with that stealth issue and limited complex weapons bay, there would have been many compromises. But that wasn't actually the main reason why the Navy passed. Another thing that influenced the demise of the NATF program was the A-12 Avenger, which was cancelled in 1991 along with the NATF because the Navy spent so much money. They almost blew their entire budget for the rest of the decade 
by early 1991. Northrop probably lost the ATF program too because of the issues with the costs and delivery of the B-2 bombers, and both the Air Force and the Navy weren't pretty happy to deal with them anymore. So you can blame a mix of budgetary requirements, politics, and interesting design choices. The Navy ended up with the most rational and cheap option to deeply modernize the F-18C and create an almost completely new aircraft based on its design, which would fulfill the roles they needed in the years to come. And boy, they did. Hey, don't forget that we're playing War Thunder together this weekend. Make sure you have an account and do the tutorial first, as it takes about 20 minutes and you don't want to miss out of the game. The link to make an account is below. See you there! So yeah, there's not a lot of info floating around about the details of the NATF program, but I do hope that this video was interesting for you, dear viewers, and I'll meet you in the next one.